May we have the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. May we greet one another. May we proclaim life. Again, may we proclaim the gospel. Life, gospel, they're both difficult words. Those who belong to the physical world, it doesn't hit their hearts, even if it is an understandable term in language-wise. With that, the title for today is Eternal Coworker. I recently heard of something called the Ten Commandments of a Christian Marriage. And it goes like this. First, a couple will not get angry at the same time. Second, raise one's voice only when the house is on fire. Third, the wife shall fulfill her husband's need, and the husband shall do so also. Fourth, do not compare each to each other's. Fifth, do not rub salt on each other's wound. Sixth, do not be angry and go to bed angry. Seventh, always remember the first love. Eighth, do not give up on each other and speak the language of heaven. Ninth, do not keep secrets from each other. And lastly, tenth, always remember and fear the matchmaker in heaven. I don't know if you can relate. The first nine of them are something that we can do, but the very last one is spiritual. What is crucial is that we have to always remember God who is the matchmaker in heaven. When I officiate weddings, I declare their marriages at the end of the service and the Bible verse I never fail to mention is Mark 10. What therefore God has joined together, let men not separate. And I proclaim the word, and what does this mean? It means that God is the matchmaker. If you are aware of this spiritual truth, everything bad between the couple seems to be resolved before you know it. And it is the Karamdeo spiritual posture. And this not only applies to marriage, but it also applies to every aspect of our lives. There are many people who have eyes but cannot see, cannot hear. It's like they cannot understand the spiritual words. It's the spiritual world, spiritual eyes, spiritual ears. Satan makes it so that we cannot listen to the word of God. We understand the news of the world, but for the news of God, we cannot relate, and we cannot relay it. What Satan attacks to most is starting from the Garden of Eden, it is the family and church. He keeps on breaking it. He goes all in into this. If we are aware of God and be before God, there is absolutely no reason to worry. We must keep our spiritual eyes open at all times and see how Satan goes all in in breaking up the churches and the families that God himself has established. That is because Satan knows that God built the churches and families as the core platforms in expanding his kingdom. He knows that breaking up marriages is the most effective way to get in God's way. So he attacks them with utmost enthusiasm. That is exactly why I told you that couples should wholly meditate on the Ten Commandments of marriage and have gospelized oneness. There's a reason that I'm telling you about the couple in today's scripture. You can see Priscilla and Aquila, whom we well know from Romans 16. 
Achilla, the husband, was a Jew from a town called Pontus, located in the Black Sea, and Priscilla was a Roman royal family. In our memory, we often remember this couple primarily for their long, lifelong role as co-workers who were alongside Apostle Paul in spreading the gospel in Rome. Even in Romans 1634, we can see that Apostle Paul acknowledged that, acknowledges them as a couple who were willing to lay their lives for him, he confessed, who risked their necks for my life. In other words, this couple was a mo role model of a co-worker. It wasn't just a one-time thing, but they were lifelong co-workers, lifelong co-workers, eternal co-workers. However, what we must not miss is that on the basis of the eternal partnership with Evangelist Paul and the Priscilla and Achilla were those who confess a deep sense of being lifelong co-workers to each other. The couple is often referred as the Priscilla couple. Achilla is her husband, but there is a reason why the couple is called after the wife. This couple is mentioned six, time, six times in the Bible, and in four of those instances, Priscilla's name is mentioned first. Usually, the husband's name is recorded first, but in this case, Priscilla's name comes first because she was more active and passionate in the ministry. However, this was possible because her husband, Achilla, fully supported Priscilla's ministry. In particular, the Priscilla couple is always mentioned together in the Bible. This shows that they lived as a beautiful couple in the Lord throughout their lives with the same faith and the same goals for the gospel. In this way, Priscilla and Achilla were lifelong partners to each other, not only married couples, but also among those of us who have become one spiritual family in the gospel. We must carry a spiritual identity as eternal co-workers with each other. It's not that we do something and we don't feel good, and that if we are not acknowledged, we feel sad. It's those who are not disciples. It doesn't matter. My existence does not matter. If the gospel is proclaimed, I will be happy. Those are the people who have had this answer. When there is an awareness of being eternal co-workers with the lead pastor and church members, oneness naturally occurs. Let us be co-workers for 237 movement. Let us confess together. We are eternal co-workers. Amen. It's not something that we just do for a decade or five years and stop. Let us look at each other. You are my co-worker. Is it a bit awkward? For Korean people, they're like this, expressing and ex being able to say such things. Only Korean people, they have stiff facial expressions. I would go around Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, and all the nations, but I would be able to find the Korean people. It's a multi-ethnic age. But I would say, oh, that person is Korean, because they're always nervous and their faces are stiff. It's because they are very conscious about how people would look at them. So their facial expressions are very stiff.
So the missionary's niece had gotten married to a family who's Chinese, but her facial expression was not changeable. She's very pretty, but she's very stiff. So she looked very cold. So animals don't smile. Only people smile. But even if someone is ugly, if they smile, they are pretty. So people say, Pastor, is it true that even if you're ugly, if you smile, are you handsome? So it's to that extent, may you be able to smile. It's difficult for me too. Serving one church, going all in, living this life. But if you're not able to have oneness with the coworkers next to you, then isn't that such a pity? Isn't that a trickery of Satan? So we're doing this eternal coworker shit. So with the spiritual consciousness, I bless all members of Yuan Church in the name of the Lord that we will all be used as the main figures of the world evangelization of the two, three, seven nations and 5,000 people groups that God is fulfilling. Number one, meeting for missions. Through last Sunday's message, we looked at the ministry of Apostle Paul in Thessalonica. Through an intensive three-week evangelism camp, incredible transformations took place that turned the situation of the field upside down. Just for three weeks, upon that empty land, the Thessalonica church was established. However, some Jewish people, far from rejoicing at this dramatic change, stirred up trouble by mobilizing a group of troublemakers to capture Paul's team. At this time, Jason and some brothers hid Paul and were captured instead. Because they were hid, they were captured themselves. Unfortunately, they paid bail and were released. And at that night, the brothers in Thessalonica sent Paul and Silas to Bria. Paulo was sent to Rhea once again testified the gospel in the Jewish synagogue. There, and many people, including Greek women of high standing, began to believe. However, the Jews from Thessalonica learned about this and could not remain silent. They went to Rhea and caused an uproar by moving a mob there as well. That is why Paul moved to Athens and testified the gospel. That's where he fled. Athens, the current capital city of Greece, was a center of Greek culture and was a famous city of intellect and philosophy. Paul must have had many expectations as he went to Athens. Paul arrived in Athens and saw that the city was full of idols and thus became very angry because he was looking forward to what was hidden there, auto knowledge and philosophy. And he thought, I would go and have disputes and debates. He probably had that heart as well. But when he went there, it was filled with idols. And he had great rage. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happen to be there. He also debated with famous philosophers to convey his message. 
but only in Eden there was little evidence. In some ways, he attempted to make people understand based on his academic background rather than proclaiming the gospel, but those who are full of Greek philosophical ideology, he had no choice but to draw a parallel line. Of course, there was evidence that Paul preached the message of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, and the city's officials and many people believed. Think about it. Plato, Aristotle, they were all from Athens. They had great knowledge. And in one sense, it's because they were not touched because of that. Even for the people in the world, they have their own belief and ideologies. So it's difficult to understand the gospel. However, the church was not built in Athens. So Paul left his sorrow in Athens behind and moved to the area of Corinth. Verses 1 through 2. When Paul goes to Corinth, he meets Priscilla and her husband. Originally, they lived in Rome, but the Roman Emperor Claudius issued an order to expel the Jews, forcing all Jews living in Rome to leave. At the time, there was a lot of controversy between the Jews and the Christians in Rome, and this became an excuse for Emperor Claudius to expel the Jews from Rome, saying that they were causing troubles. Priscilla was a Roman noble and could have remained in Rome and lived a comfortable life, but she came to Corinth with her husband to keep her faith. It is believed that Priscilla and her husband were already Christians before coming to Corinth. When you look at today's passage, it says that there is no mention of their conversion after meeting Paul. The hint is that Achilla is a native of Pontus. When the Holy Spirit descended on Mark's upper room in Acts chapter 2, Jewish diasporas from all over the world were there. Among them were Jews from Pontus. This is believed that Achilla received the gospel through these people. It preached the gospel in such events that happened. Verse 3. To pursue the couple who settled in Corinth ran a tent business. At the time, tents were used for a variety of purposes, and in particular, tents were needed for the Roman army to wage wars or to be stationed in the battlefield. The scale was large and wars were very common at that time. So the tent business was very successful, like the goose that lays the golden eggs. In some ways, it is like having the head office in Rome and a branch in Cor Corinth. And then they met Paul who came to Corinth. What is interesting is that Paul had the skill to make tents. Jewish parents do not give their children fish but teach them how to fish. In other words, they provided vocational training that will last a lifetime, and Paul was taught 
of tent making skills. However, what we must not do is oversee with our spiritual eyes to see that this is all God's amazing plan for missions. It is a meeting for missions prepared by God. It is not a coincidence that both Paul and Priscilla and Achilla had tent making skills and that the Priscilla couple had been expelled from Rome and had come to Corinth just before Paul came to Corinth. It was not a coincidence, but it was an inevitable meeting. It was upon God's absolute plan. Is that true? It is God's inevitable plan. For non-believers, they say, oh, we got lucky. But no, it is the grace of God. When you listen to the words of a person, you can see if they are of the gospel or not. So one of our deacons had said, oh, it is very lucky for me to be able to receive the gospel. And he said, it is not luck. And the person said, oh, it is grace. The grace of God will come upon you if you think about that. It is not a coincidence. It is God's amazing providence. There is no such thing as a coincidence for God's children. All happens within God's plan. The fact that God has led you to your own church, your meeting with me, and the meeting with the believers next to you are all meetings for missions. Is it all a coincidence? Is it that you failed in your business and had come to Kangsao? It is not a coincidence, it is the plan of God. Upon all the deacons, elders, the people next to you, it is not a coincidence, it is an inevitable meeting. It is God's plan. Until when? Until we stand in front of God. You must be able to enjoy this. If you have disbelief, we'll be taking it away from it, of it. Our meeting is what? It is the meeting for missions. We have started this church because of missions. It is our heavenly mandate calling and missions. So together we must evangelize to the two, three, seven nations of 5,000 people groups. But if you say that you're not interested, then you will lose hold, not lose hold of the blessing that God has prepared. Because God has given us the blessing. The world's population now exceeds to 8 billion people. And the meeting between you and me is the meeting of one in a billion. The same goes for the meeting with the believers next to you. Think about all the people here in Korea. You cannot comprehend it in numbers. Our meeting is not a coincidence, but a plan of God. What an amazing and thankful meeting this is. I bless you in the name of the Lord that all you in church believers feel grateful for this meeting, for missions prepared by God, and enjoy the evidence to stand proudly as the main figures of the Team of Three movement, the start of 10,000 movement, the 237 healing movement, that God will fulfill. We're all different. It's not wrong. We must be able to differentiate these terms. Why do we have marital fights? It's because we're different. How we are born, our language, our habits. But because people say that they are wrong, there are problems. 
May we let everything down and be able to be used as the main figures. Number two, the trained disciples. Verse four. Paul worked as a tent maker during the week and testified the gospel at the synagogue every Sabbath day. There is, this is where the term self-funded missions came from. Preaching the gospel in a different culture while working in different cultures and earning your own living expenses is called self-funded missions. In English, self-funded missions is called tent making, the tent maker, which originated from the fact that Paul served as a missionary while making tents. Paul preached the gospel in the synagogue every Sabbath, and the Priscilla couple was always with them. In verse 11, Paul ministered in Corinth for one and a half years. While living together during this period, the Priscilla couple continued to live receiving team ministry from Paul and achieved spiritual growth through the evangelism field. In short, they have been trained. In particular, Paul was in a state of pledge to speak only of Jesus Christ and nothing else in Corinth. Based on his experience in Athens, Paul relaying his knowledge had difficulties because he preached the gospel through debates and discussions. And Priscilla and Achilla were raised in the essence of the gospel. So Pastor O is doing the Canadian ministry right now, and I got a report. And he said, I went to many camps overseas, but he said everything is the same as Yohan Church there. It's so much the same. It's not easy to have more than 50 people gather. For many missionaries who go overseas, having 10 people is not easy as well. But for four years, being just like Yohan Church, Pastor Paul said he was touched. Missionary O has Yewon DNA because he was here from being a young adult. So for those who come from a different church and become a pastor here, something does not fit. What's really pure in their hearts is not there. It's so strange. So what I look at is if they have the Yewon DNA or not. The Yewon DNA is different. Having the oneness DNA. So one by one, may you believe that God has great plans for you. So Priscilla and Achilla received passionate heart of Paul for Christ and the covenantal sorrow of the field. And verses 24 to 28 of the text shows how well the Priscilla couple were trained and were the sure partisans of the gospel. If we look at verse 24, Apollos appears. He was a scholar from Alexandria who was eloquent and well-versed in the Bible. He studied the Old Testament in his own way and passionately preached about Jesus. Unfortunately, he only knew about John's baptism and was unaware of the core of the gospel that Jesus is the Christ. So the Priscilla couple quietly called Apollos and accurately explained and delivered the core of the gospel. 
it was delivered more than being caught. Surprisingly, Apollos accepted the living gospel after he heard it, regardless of his position and educational background, even if he was a scholar. Receiving the gospel from Priscilla and Achilla. And then he goes over to Achaia and shows even greater evidence. Later, Apollos took on the role of another fellow worker of Paul to the <coughs> extent that he ministered in the Corinthian church in place of Paul. The trained disciple is very important like this. You must know that if one person receives training and changes, the spiritual ripple effect will be enormous. So before, I did not raise church officers if they were not trained because they are not able to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. If one re person receives training, it is going to have a great ripple effect. You must be able to receive training in order to have a different imprint root in nature. There will be opportunities for various trainings, not only for remnants, but for all the believers as we open the three-day weekend era in the future. So upon this time, may be able to have training and then change all the things that you see from the world. So I bless you in the name of the Lord that may you stand as the main figures of the field transformation and follow the spiritual stream of the church. This is the conclusion. The second mission's journey of Apostle Paul concludes with the Corinth ministry in today's scripture. If you look at verses 18 to 22, it records the journey of Paul back to Antioch. He passed through Ephesus, went to Jerusalem, and entered Antioch. However, a unique expression appears here. It is that the Priscilla couple moved to Ephesus with Paul. The Priscilla couple prepared for Paul's ministry in Ephesus that will become the center of the third mission's journey of Paul. And after living in the Ephesus for five years, they first went to Rome to prepare for Paul's ministry in Rome. That is how much they worked together with Paul throughout his life. There is a reason why this was possible. That is because the strong partisan of the gospel was firmly established in the lives of this couple. They were eternal co-workers of Paul. In the lives of this couple, there was the firm partisan of the only gospel doing their business for the gospel. It was not for just eating and living, but it was for missions. It was to help Paul. It was that direction that they had. There is a Chinese character idiom saying, introduction, development, turn, and conclusion. It refers to a method of writing that systematically organizes the beginning, development, transition, and conclusion. Spiritually, Jesus Christ was the introduction, development, turn, and conclusion to the Priscilla couple. Everything is concluded in Jesus and everything is concluded in Christ for them. That is why they did not change eternally and were used with one heart, whole heart, and continuation for their entire lifetime. I hope that the lives of Yohan Church believers should also be the life that concludes everything in Jesus Christ, that is, the life of only all in and concentration. I bless in the name of the Lord to have this kind of spiritual attitude and become the models of being the eternal spiritual co workers. Let us pray. Dear Father God, upon all Yohan Church believers, may they not be bounded and dragged by the worldly things of what to eat and what to wear. 
But as we are born again, may be able to live a new life having the citizenship of heaven. May be the eternal co-workers of each other. May be able to realize that our meeting is because of missions and in front of God. May be able to receive training having the imprint root and natured. We're in this age, may we be those who be the main figures to save the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups and have fluttering hearts upon raising the Bartisans. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.